Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to help answer a question that many of you have been writing in asking about lately, which is how the heck do you figure out what the actual sale price was for an item that sold on eBay when a best offer was accepted? Now this has long been an issue that has been a source of frustration and confusion, particularly for new resellers, because eBay does not make this information readily available when you do a search through their advanced search tab but not to worry because there is a super secret way to figure out this information and i'm going to show you that in just a moment but just to bring everyone back to basics there's two main reasons why you would want to figure out this information to begin with why would you want to know what an item previously sold for or what similar items previously sold for. Two main reasons. Number one would be it helps to determine whether you should actually source the item to begin with. Is this something that has a good uh, sell-through rate? Uh, what is the actual price that it's generally selling for? Is this something that looks like it could be profitable for my business? And then number two, uh, when you get the item, unless it's something that you're really familiar with and you have a lot of experience uh, selling in the past, uh, you may be in a situation where you need to try to uh, figure out how you're going to price it at the current time that you're placing it in the marketplace. And one of the ways you're gonna figure that out is by seeing what it has sold for in the past. Now, that's not the only information you're going to look at. You're also going to look at what your current competition is uh, in the marketplace as well. So there's lots of different uh, information that you have to look at, but we're gonna focus on, in this video, the prior sales data. So just to bring everyone uh, back to the same common point, because I want this video to also be uh, really useful to people who are also just starting out. If you go over to this advanced tab uh, right over here, just click on that, you're gonna have two options if you wanna find what something sold for in the past. So you could click completed listings or you could click sold listings. Now I've talked about this in the past, but in general, I would advise that you start your search by looking at completed listings, not just limiting yourself to clicking the sold listings box. Many people make this mistake. They just click on the solds. And the reason why you do not want to do that is because solds is going to only tell you the items that sold. So let's, here's why this is a problem. Let's say that there were 11 of a particular item that was recently up for sale and only one of those previously sold. Well, if you just click on the sold button, it's just gonna show you the one that sold, but it's not gonna tell you that 10 others did not sell. And chances are, you don't wanna pick up that item that only one sold out of 11 that were listed. So, to figure that information out, which ones sold, which ones didn't sell, that's why you go to completed listings because completed gives you both of those uh, types of information. So you could type in any keyword you want. I have something that I already uh, cut and I'm gonna paste in here, which is uh, Walt Disney Comics Lot. And the reason I put that in is because that's actually uh, the last item that I have listed up here that I did right before I came on here uh, tonight. Um, this is a lot of 26 Walt Disney uh, comic books. Um, there are mostly golden age books, so from 1950 to 1955, 56 range. And you can see there I have a price of $224.99. So this is actually in my eBay store right now, Primetime Treasure. Now that number I did not just pull out of a hat. That number was determined based on looking at prior sales data and also looking at my current uh, competition uh, for the item. So let's go back over here. And we're gonna hit this button here. We're gonna do our search. And you'll notice that uh, by default, it shows you items that sold recently first. So if you wanna change that, you're gonna have to select something here from one of these tabs. But just to show you, I'm gonna scroll down a minute. And this is on desktop, so keep in mind the app uh, will function uh, differently sometimes in terms of you know what colors they show for the font of the prices. But uh, for desktop, the way it works is that if it didn't sell, uh, the price will show in black font. And that's what it looks like. So black colored font right there. So we're gonna scroll down. So all those things didn't sell. 
But if we go over here, we see there was a lot of 10 that sold for $9.99. Now also make sure that you factor in the shipping price, which you could see down here, and is not highlighted in green. So you would want to add that in uh, to your price estimations when you're figuring things out. And if we scroll down some more, we could see that there are some that sold for more money with uh, larger lots and older books. So we've got an 8109 plus $19 shipping. So about a hundred dollar price tag there. And then we've got some others uh, down here as well. But, and these are actual sale prices. You just take that price and you just add it to the shipping. None of these involve the best offer being accepted, but let me show you an instance where a best offer actually was accepted. And this is by the way, something I would advise you doing when you are sourcing and also when you are trying to determine price is do a search by the highest price plus shipping because this will in most situations give you a good sense of what the most is that you should be able to get out of your item now there is a caveat to this which is that if there if you have a relatively unique piece or there's only one or two of that item that sold recently it could be that whoever sold it at whatever that top price is that they may have underpriced it so in that situation um, you may want to go up and above that price and see if you could get more but there are many instances where there's just a lot of a particular item or it's not that rare of an item and so when you're in that type of situation and you generally see a range of prices chances are that the one that's at the top of that range is the max that you could get out of it or close to the max uh, depending on uh, condition so uh, we're going to scroll down here and you're going to see that there are some big sales, uh, $2,100, $1,000, but we're going to scroll down some more to get something that's closer to what I actually have uh, listed. And you can see right here, we have these uh, Walt Disney comics, and that's one of the main titles of my lot. And there's 10 of them here. Okay. And um, it looks like, right, that it sold for around $300 because there's $300. And then you could see there is a slash through it plus a 970. So how much did it actually sell for? So if you just limit it to this, eBay does not uh, tell you this. Now, I'm just going to stop for one second. And just in case anyone from eBay is watching this, Please, 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 the next time you put out a seller update or you have a meeting about, you know, something you could do for sellers, could you please just get rid of this feature where you don't tell people what the actual price was? I know you want to indicate in some way that a best offer was accepted, but just indicate best offer was accepted in some way, put the original price and then put the sale price. That should not be that complicated to do. Uh, so anyway. Um, in order for us to figure out uh, what the actual sale price was, uh, we're going to have to click on the item. And we're going to have to go inside. So we're going to see, uh, see original listing. So we're going to click on that and we're going to go down right there. And um, just to make this a little bigger here so you could see a little bit better. Uh, there we go. There's Donald Duck. And look at that, Huey, Dewey, and Louie in the house. First time on the Primetime Treasure Hunter YouTube channel. So uh, I want to say hi to them. There you go, a little surprise appearance. Anyway, we're going to scroll down a bit. And there we go. We've got the eBay item number. So we just want to snatch that. We'll grab that. And um, let's hope no one sees us grab that. So we're going to get out of here. And we're going to go to a site called Flipper Tools. Now, this is one of several sites I'm going to show you, just so you have a few options. And if you just go to Google and type in Flipper Tools, you will see it's automatically going to bring you an option here that says eBay Best Offer Actual Selling. So you just click on that. And it will just tell you the actual price. All you have to do is put the item ID or you could put the URL number into it as well. So that's the web address. But we're just going to put the item number in. We're going to hit OK. And then we're going to scroll down and voila, just like magic, there it is, $105. Now, this does not include the shipping, by the way. But that's a big difference from if you were assuming that these sold for uh where is it over here that if you assume that these sold for three hundred dollars or close to it it actually really wasn't anything close to it you're at this hundred and five dollar price point so uh that really really makes a big difference in terms of comping things now uh, another place that you can go uh, that's also uh, much easier now is Terra Peak. Now, Terra Peak um, 
used to be a separate site from eBay, and technically it still is up until uh, March 31st. Uh, you could see it right here. Uh, but eBay purchased uh, TerraPeak and has been absorbing uh, TerraPeak within eBay. So pretty soon, and there's going to be a point when people watch this video where this site is no longer even up anymore. And it is already integrated within eBay. Um, th this just happened recently. But what you uh, would do if you just went to the main TerraPeak site is you would just type in what your term is. And now I know more what the item is, so I can narrow it down. So I put in Walt Disney Comics Lot, and I just added the word 10 just to get to my specific specific item and if you hit search and by the way make sure you adjust your range here so you could just uh, search for a year or you can narrow it down however you want to but I'm just gonna hit the search button and we're gonna scroll down and you could see that it's gonna show up right here there's the item right there a hundred and five dollars so it's just gonna straight up tell you the price it's not gonna mess at all with telling you what the original price was and then it's also gonna tell you what the shipping was for it um, now, if you go within eBay itself now, so if you just go to Seller Hub, and right now if you go over to the Research tab, uh, you're going to see there's a new uh, feature up top. It says Terra Peak Product Research, and here I already have it pasted in, Walt Disney Comics Lot 10, and you just hit the search button, and we scroll down and where is it here we go you just scroll down there we go a hundred and five dollars plus twenty six seventy four uh, shipping uh, so you know this used to be a pain in the neck uh, logging into the actual Terra Peak site when I was out there sourcing uh, so um, this is um, way easier having it within eBay uh, itself um, so that's uh, one place that I go to again flipper tools is very easy as well and there is another place that you could go to too if you want to uh, it's way easier to do it on the app I'm not going to demonstrate it here because it's the same thing I showed you um, in uh, in the other tabs it's the same exact type of process but just go to sellhound.com uh, and log in on your app and type in the item and it will give you um, prior um, sale information on that as well. So that's just another place that you can uh, go to. So all different types of sources here uh, that can help you out. Um, I hope that you found the information uh, useful and hopefully that answers all the questions that have been coming in recently about it. Um, if you like the video, uh, make sure that you uh, hit the like button. Make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you hit this bell icon for notifications for when I go live. Come by to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, and my Instagram account, at prime underscore time underscore treasure. And if you would like to donate to support the channel, there is a PayPal link right up top. So I will see you back at the next video, everyone. Take care.